Are you overinsured? Now, that's a funny question coming from a financial advisor because far too often we're talking about how most people don't have enough cover or the right types of cover or maybe their cover in Australia is not covering them overseas. But in this video, I'm going to dive in to five common scenarios where people are not remembering to actually reduce their cover, which might mean that you're paying too much for cover that you don't really need. Hi there, I'm Jared Brown. If you're new to the channel, thank you for tuning in. In this channel, we unpack all sorts of personal finance issues for Australians in Singapore and all over the world. So today I'm going to share with you five all too common scenarios that Australian expats face that might mean you actually have more personal insurance than you really need, which of course means you might be actually paying too much. So let's dive in and let's explore if you could actually be reducing your insurance and of course, the premiums associated. Number one, really to review is, have your debt levels actually reduced since you took out the cover? When we look at our life and our total permanent disability cover, we generally want to be able to repay our mortgages, our investment loans, personal loans, whatever it might be to clear that outstanding debt. Now, if we had a million dollar loan when we took out the life insurance policy, so we took out a million dollars of life to cover it, but our loan is now only 500,000, that might mean that we can actually reduce our cover if that's all we really need to be able to repay. So that could mean that we could chop our insurance in half. So don't ignore that one. All too often, or in many cases rather, Australian expats and many others will have their mortgages on a principal and interest repayment method, which means that those loans are going to gradually decline over time, which may mean that your insurance needs do as well. So that's number one. Number two is have your kids finished school or have they actually transitioned into public school in Australia, for example? With many Australian expats and you know, personally, we really want to be able to cover the remaining school fees for our children. Now, if they're at an international school here in Singapore, as we all know, those come with quite an eye-watering price tag. So even if we looked at just secondary school alone, that could very easily be $200,000 to $250,000. But what if they're actually finished school or they're back in Australia in public school and that expense is now $500 or $1,000 a year. So that may have a significant reduction in how much cover we actually need. So don't ignore that one when it comes to our life and our TPD cover. When it comes to our trauma and critical illness cover, we may also be factoring in that additional expense of those school fees. In the event that I'm diagnosed with a terminal illness, I would want to be able to still cover those school fees, but if they're now only $100 a month, instead of three or 4,000, that has a significant impact on the amount of cover that I need. So that's number two. Number three is have your liquid assets increased. Now it's important to note we're distinguishing between liquid assets and illiquid assets. In the event of our passing or total disability, we don't want to be forced to sell properties because as we all know, fire sale of a property can result in us missing out on quite a bit of that value. So really what we want to think about are our superannuation, cash in the bank, shares, ETFs, managed funds, employer stock, whatever it might be, those liquid assets that we or our family would be able to sell in the event that something happens to us. Now, if that's gone from 100,000 when we took out the cover to a million dollars, then I might actually need $900,000 less cover than when I took it out. So don't forget to, to actually calculate those numbers and don't ignore the increase in your liquid assets. The fourth question or the fourth variable to review is are you approaching retirement? When it comes to our life or our TPD or even our critical illness cover, but especially our life in TPD, we're often trying to ensure our income for the remainder of our working life or at least a portion of. Now, if I'm a year or two off retirement, I might not actually have that much income that I need to cover or be able to replace in the event that something happens to me. So if you are approaching retirement, start thinking more about uh, 
illness, health insurance, medical cover, because that's what's going to often be far more important than a life or a TPD policy. So don't ignore that one. And the fifth and final variable to really consider, and we see this one time and time again in Singapore and many expat hubs, is was your insurance actually based on too high a multiple of your income? Many assume that they should simply have two or three or five or 10 times their income in critical illness or life cover. Now these are often arbitrary and unhelpful numbers that don't really give us a fit for purpose insurance solution. Consider you might be on a $250,000 base salary and a $250,000 bonus. Now that gives me an annual salary of 500,000. Now, if I'm assuming that I should have two or three times that amount in critical illness cover, that would be one to 1.5 million. That's probably ridiculous in most cases. And in most cases, that of course is going to cost me two, three, four times more than I really need to be paying. So don't ignore that one, really crunch your own numbers and consider if you can actually reduce your own cover. So there you have it, five simple variables or questions to explore when it comes to your own cover. Don't forget to explore reductions where possible and start reducing those premiums.